the Quran came down not just in Ramadan, but on Laylatul Qadr. That when our Prophet ﷺ gave the first khutbah of Ramadan, he mentioned that a blessed month has come to you. In it is a night that is better than a thousand months. Whoever manages to stand Laylatul Qadr, all of his previous sins will be forgiven. All the angels that Allah has ever created, they come down to this earth on Laylatul Qadr. On this night, every divine decision, it is made and it is announced. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever has been deprived of this one night, he has been deprived of all good. And no other night, no other month, no other era of the year has been highlighted the way that this one night has been highlighted. For Allah Azza wa Jal revealed an entire surah dedicated to explaining this night. And it is called the surah of Laylatul Qadr. that when our Prophet ﷺ gave the first khutbah of Ramadan, he mentioned that a blessed month has come to you. And the next thing that he said, in it is a night that is better than a thousand months. It is as if Ramadan itself is blessed simply because of this one month. In it is a night that is better than a thousand months. The whole month of Ramadan, he is summarizing it by this one sentence. That this, it is as if he's saying, this is why it is blessed. In it is a night that is better than a thousand months. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever has been deprived of this one night, he has been deprived of all good. Whoever has been deprived of this one night has been deprived of all good. All the malaika and the Holy Spirit in it, they come down. How many angels are there? More than any human can think about. You do the math yourself that our Prophet ﷺ told us that for every drop of rain, there's an angel assigned. For every one of us, there's a malakul mot. For every one of us, there are two angels writing down. For every single pebble, for every single mountain, for every single cloud, for every single aspect, Allah Azzawajal has created an angel. And this is only the angels related to this world. There are also angels that have no other job than to worship Allah. There are angels that visit the Baytul Ma'mur, which is the Kaaba of the angels. 70,000, the Prophet said, every day they come new since the beginning of time. And they will continue to come 70,000 new angels who have never come until the Ayyom Al Qiyamah. No two angels come twice to Baytul Ma'mur. You start doing the math and your mind simply boggles away that you get into the billions and the trillions and then you simply lose track of the quantity. And that is why Allah says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُوْ that no one knows the quantity of his army, meaning the angels, except him. No one can count that. And all of this vast quantity, they all come down. There's no space for the angels, it's tight. They all come down to this earth. So there's no space at all. So it is called Laylatul Qadr. In this interpretation, the night of congestion. There's no space because the whole world is full of angels. There are some of the signs that have been reported for Laylatul Qadr. There are Prophet ﷺ mentioned certain signs that we can try to figure out when is Laylatul Qadr. Now, we know from the authentic ahadith that Laylatul Qadr is in one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And we also know our Prophet ﷺ said, fil awakhir, that find Laylatul Qadr in the 10 last nights when nine days are left, and when seven days are left, and when five days are left, and when three days are left, and when one day is left i.e. the 21st and the 23rd and the 25th and so on and so forth, the odd nights. 
whoever manages to stand Laylatul Qadr with Iman and with Ihtisab, all of his previous sins will be forgiven. That is an amazing blessing that for one night, if you stand with Iman and having that desire, all of the previous sins will be forgiven. Scholars differed. Does this include major sins or only minor sins? Some scholars said only minor sins. Other scholars said no. If you truly stand on Laylatul Qadr, then you will also repent to Allah. And when you repent to Allah, then even your major sins are forgiven. And the most important dua that we can say on Laylatul Qadr, Aisha said, O Messenger of Allah, if I happen to be worshipping on Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? And the Prophet ﷺ told her to say this dua. So let us memorize this dua and let us be frequent in this dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. This is the height of what we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to have our sins not just forgiven, but forgotten, erased. Because to forgive is one thing, but to erase is much more. And we want Allah to erase our sins as if we never did it. Allahumma innaka afuun. Oh Allah, you are the one who wipes away the sins as if you never did them. Tuhibbul afwa. You love to wipe these sins away. Fa'fu anna. So wipe all of our sins away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who loves to have afu, He will erase all of your sins and He will not leave any single trace and you won't even remember that you've done these sins and you won't even recall them and you won't be nervous and you won't be embarrassed because you've not done anything wrong to begin with and Allah will not remind you of it and Allah will not punish you of it and not just that and Allah will give you everything which you asked for and will give you much more than what you asked for that which is good for you. Allahu Akbar. Look at this amazing dua. Shouldn't we go and run to Allah and say that dua from the bottom of our hearts? May Allah make us witness that great night. Say Ameen, Ya Rabbil Ameen. May Allah make me and you witness that great night. Or you who is complaining that you can't stop backbiting, lying and gossiping. Or you who is complaining I can't pray Fajr on time. Or sister who is complaining I can't wear the proper hijab. Or brother and sister who is complaining I can't respect my parents the way they're supposed to be respected. Those who are complaining every time I say Allah Akbar, Allah is greater than everything and anything. I said that but my mind is somewhere else. Know that the thing that is holding you in a simple answer are your sins. A man came to Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu an. He told him, Ya Amir al muminin I used to wake up at night and pray and for some reason I stopped. I don't know what's the reason. Ali bin Abi Talib said radiallahu an, Innaka rajul qad, Allahu Akbar, you are a man who was you have been chained by your sins. Brothers and sisters, break these chains, break them out. This is the opportunity. Use every night of the last 10 nights. Laylatul Qadr is one of them. Please don't focus only on the 27th. Be like the Prophet wasallam. He used to prepare for all of the last 10 nights. He used to do three things. He used to prepare himself physically. He would like roll up his sleeve. He would stay all night praying dua and Quran and dhikr, wake up his family, no sleeping, no games, no videos, no funny videos, nothing. Dua and asking Allah al -afu. Brothers and sisters, don't procrastinate. Maybe this is the moment, Wallahi, you're looking forward to go to the next level, to change your life upside down. Yes, a change overnight. Yes, yes, I'm aware from what I'm saying. This is a dua that Allah has gifted us. Roll up your sleeve, like Rasulullah how he prepared himself physically. He would do all what it takes, sleep and perhaps in the morning that so I can energize you at night. I ask you by Allah, if you can, share that video. Press like if you wish, but what's more important is share. Share so others can benefit. You might be a reason why someone's life would change. Jazakumullah khair, wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.